Hi everyone, I'm Thomas Wiki, the VP of Data Science at Quantopian. And today I wanted to introduce our newest challenge on the economic implications of COVID-19. This challenge is a little bit different than the other ones we have done before, where previous challenges we ask you to develop a quant trading factor that will be predictive in the market, while here we're asking you to provide an analysis and visualization that illuminates what the ramifications of COVID-19 are on the world economy or the US economy. So here I have the website open for the challenge. You can see, um, so it's, if you go to the Quantopian forums, it will be a post in there. And the idea is that in this thread, people will post their Jupyter notebooks that combine market data and potentially also COVID-19 data. In order to do this analysis, we added the COVID-19 cases, the number of confirmed cases and the number of deaths over time for each different country onto the platform, and you can access it there. So what I want to do in this video is briefly illustrate how to create such an analysis uh, with an example case study that I created. So here's the notebook, um, which is also attached on this post. And ideally, this is the outcome of this. So we want a single plot that is hopefully illustrative and shows some interesting results of the relationship between this pandemic and the world economy. So here now I opened an example notebook showing how to analyze this type of data set. And I hope that it will not only produce interesting results that help us navigate through this pandemic, but also give you a chance to sharpen your data science skills and data visualization skills. This analysis hopefully demonstrates some of the key characteristics of what a good analysis looks like. So we start with some text to explain what the hypothesis and what I was asking here is, are there, are there US companies which have the revenue come primarily from different parts of the world are they differently impacted um, by the number of COVID-19 cases that we're seeing? So basically, if a country generates most of its revenue, say from China, which is in the Asia Pacific region, then we would expect that as the pandemic started there, that those companies might be most severely affected because everyone will expect that, well, if there's a pandemic and the number of cases are rising in Asia, then the revenue of those companies will go down. So in order to test that, I create this notebook. And some of the things that I hope you can glean from it is that there is a logical progression from each cell to the next with comments that explain this. There are interim results so that someone else reading this notebook can just reverse through it and see what each step is doing and the output that each step produces. Very important and unfortunately not done often enough, even in serious graphs, is that you should always label your X and Y axes and provide titles that are meaningful and descriptive. And then you will see a final plot that brings it all together. So first, we just import our data analysis libraries, including empirical and alpha lens, which are Quantopian libraries, which are open source. And then we also import some Quantopian functions to get the data from our database into this notebook so that we can work with it. Some of the specific ones are pipeline. This is in general, the tool to use to get data into the research notebook. The particular data set that we wanna work with is from FactSet and it's called GeoRef for geographic revenue. So this will have the information for every stock um, where it's generating its revenue from. We wanna look at US equities, so we import this domain, this will just run the pipeline, and then this is gonna be our stock universe. And also, we're not gonna use it here, but we have it here just in order for you to maybe explore this, because I think this will be also the avenue of some further really interesting analyses, is Ribix, which contains information on the sector that the stock is in. As you can see, the first thing that I'm then doing is load in the COVID-19 data. 
So I'm using the local CSV function, which is custom to Quantopian research environment. And I'm just retrieving it from this file, which was already in your data folder. So around every two weeks, we will update this file with the most recent data. So, but you don't have to download it or anything. You can just run this and it'll get you the current file, which is already in your research container. If you do want to update it to get even more up-to-date data, or you just want to look at the source data, we got this from our world in data, which is a processed version of the COVID-19 data from the European Center of Disease Control, the ECDC. Then the first thing I'm doing is, um, so this data is has the cases for every individual country. Um, but what we're going to look at here, and this is a limitation of the GRF data, we only have it on the level of continents or regions. So we want to link the different countries that we have the COVID-19 data for to these different regions. So here you can see I'm just providing a map where United States maps to North America, Canada maps to North America, and we have all the European countries, and then we have the Asia Pacific countries. So this is just some selected countries where the number of cases is significant. And this will be where we map this to um, from country to region, uh, which is what I'm doing with this pandas line. So then we just want to look at the output. So it's always good to, because we have this additional cell after every data transformation, just so that someone else reading this can see, okay, well, this is the data. I should have done this here as well. Um, as I just noticed, so that way it would have been clear that this is what we're starting with, now we're transforming it, then we're getting to this. So for every day, for every region, we get the number of new cases. This is just directly from the data from the ECDC. We get the number of new deaths. We get the total number of cases, so this will be just the accumulation of this, and we get the total number of deaths. So then the next thing I'm doing is I'm just plotting the number of confirmed cases on the y-axis over time for our three regions. And as you can see, well, it started to really ramp up in well, the end of January. So this is where Wuhan and all these other regions and it started to really spread in Asia. Um, and here, this uh, breaking point is I think when they changed how to count these cases. So there's some data quality issues here and difficulties to work with. And since then, however, they did have a really good response to the virus and were able to really flatten that curve for the most part, uh, especially a lot of other countries, including South Korea and Taiwan and um, Hong Kong and uh, Japan as well. So they seem to ha not have the rise and that is represented here where we compare it with Europe, where we had the first hotspot, uh, or the second hotspot rather, um, where it just has continued to exponentially increase and surpass a uh, total of Asia um, pretty quickly. And the same is true for North America. So these two are on two very similar trajectories, unfortunately. And here, well, maybe we can see that Europe is starting to decay a little bit. It is looking promising at the time where we are recording this. Hopefully that trend will continue. But now we want to say, well, okay, well, one very simple thing to say, well, is to ask, when did the number of cases cross a significant threshold? Well, defining that threshold is rather subjective. Um, so here I just pretty arbitrarily chose uh, just looking at this plot that I want to say once we crossed 25,000 cases, then we're going to say, okay, this is now where the pandemic has really hit that region. And this is when I want to look at what, how do the stock returns of those companies that are exposed, that are generating the revenue from Asia, how have those been impacted in the days Six, um, following this crossing of that significant threshold. And then the same, of course, for Europe and North America. So here now I'm just getting those dates. So here we can see, so this is when this happened. Um, 
So February 6th is when Asia Pacific crossed 25,000 cases. And then in this next cell, so now we have pre-processed our COVID-19 data. Now we want to get the market data, the economic data from the Quantop from Quantopian via the pipeline. And this is taken pretty much directly from the tutorial that we have on the website on how to use the GREF data. The first thing we have to do is we slice it and so get the right region that we care about. And then we're just getting the most recent revenue exposure um, for each of those different regions. Here I'm also getting the sector just for completeness. And then I'm creating a pipeline. Check out the tutorial to see how the pipeline works. In brief, it is allows you to specify these columns and then certain computations that you want to do on data sources that you have. So each of those three columns we will have come from these data sources that we define up here. And then we want to do some transformations on them. The first thing is we want to rank them, and then we want to z-score them. So this will just create values, factor scores, essentially, that are normalized So because we rank them, but then also going to be centered around zero. So negative values will mean it's lower than uh, the average rank, and positive values it's higher than the average rank. So this is just some very easy pre-processing to make sure that there are no outliers that are affecting things, and we sort of normalize things in many ways. So this is a quick and effective way of making the data look uh, nice and be able to cre easily create factors from it. Then we have uh, the sector column as well, which is what we get from Rubix. The domain is the X equities, and then we screen this. So we're going to use the only stocks in the QTU for this. Um, and then we're just going to filter on these exposures being not null. So we're just throwing out values that are missing. Then we run the pipeline from 2018 for just a single day. And the reason is that on the platform, we have a holdout set for the GeoRef data set. And this data set has a holdout period of two years. So the last date that we have data for on the platform is 2018. Now, that is, well, over two years ago, but actually it's not that big of a deal. The reason is this data is updated only annually anyway. So it's very infrequent that we get more recent data. And then the other assumption here is that this type of data does not change as much. So you can look at this and it, it holds true. But as you can imagine, a company that is really active, say, in Asia and is generating most of its revenue will probably roughly stay that way and still generate a lot of its revenue. Of course, these, that is a limitation, but um, it's the best we can deal with. So we run the pipeline, and then we drop the date column just because we don't need it here, because we're going to forward fill this anyway. And then this is the output of this. So we have for every equity in our universe, we have the rank and then z-scored exposure for Asia Pacific, the EU, North America, and then also the sector that that equity is in. And because I'm not using it here, so this is just for you to get a head start. If you were to look at sector information, I'm dropping it here because here I'm not using it. So then this is what it looks like. Now we want to look at how the revenue exposure affects the stock price. So we have to get the stock prices, which is what we're doing in this next cell. So we do this by calling the get pricing function, get the symbols in our universe from this data frame, start date, end date. This comes from our COVID data, the closing price. And then with the next thing, what we want to do is now we want to combine the prices and these factor scores. So we drop the date of this factor score because we want forward fillers, forward fillers. And now we want to, in order to combine this, we are just going to take the index from the prices, right? Which is from, uh, which is covering the same time period for which we have COVID data. For every day in our pricing, we're going to recreate this factor value. So essentially, what this means is, for every day, we will have all the QTU. GeoRef exposures and just 
going to broadcast this. So every day we'll have the same values, right? Because these values don't change. We're going to completely forward fill them. So this will just have the same set of data for every day. So we do this uh, with this code. And as you can see, this is what it looks like. So this is just for a single day. But um, so for every data, for every date in our data set, uh, we will have this and it will have the same data for every day. So now basically we have everything lined up, right? We have our covered data, we have our pricing data, and we have our affected data aligned with that pricing data by forward filling it. Now we can use alpha lens to link those two together and look at the factor returns essentially. So if we were to treat this as a long short factor, right? Where we say, well, companies that generate a lot of their exposure from Asia Pacific, for example, Apple, right, will have positive values, while those that on average have less of their exposure come from Asia Pacific will have negative values, such as this one. So here you can see, um, yeah, a lot of Apple's revenue in relatively is generated from Asia Pacific and Europe and less from North America, which is a bit surprising. So then, as I said, we were going to use alpha lens to compute the factor returns with first calling the get clean factor and forward returns function. So this essentially marries the factor scores with the prices, it creates a new data structure called factor data. And from this, I can compute the factor returns. So we loop over each column in our factor column. We get the factor data, and then we also get the factor returns by calling alpha lens performance factor returns. And here we are only getting the one day forward return factor, just because we don't really care too much about the factor being predictive itself. We care more about how do those companies fare in response to the regions crossing certain thresholds. Um, and because the factor scores themselves are not changing, right, because we're just forward filling, it actually doesn't really matter. So um, whether this is one day or the current day, uh, this will just illustrate how do those, how does the aggregates, uh, the aggregate factor of going long companies that generate the revenue from Asia Pacific and short those that generate less of their revenue from Asia Pacific, how do those relate in response? So now we have the factor returns in this data frame. So for every day, we have the factor return. Now I'm just renaming them. And then all that's left is really putting everything together into a final plot. So this is just the code to do that. And this should really be uh, the, the heart of the whole analysis that you're doing is this plot that, that puts it all together. And so there's definitely some work required in making this look nice, making sure that the colors match up, that the labels are correct and descriptive. And so definitely spend some time on tweaking this and making sure it looks nice. So here is the plot that I created, consisting out of these two subplots. And the first one being, again, what we saw in the beginning, the number of confirmed cases over time as they increase in these three different regions. And the threshold value we have for deciding when it is a significant number and we expect those companies to be impacted. And then in this other plot, we just plot the cumulative returns of those three factors. So we just want to look at how do those companies change their returns over time as these events occur. So here and then on the um, vertical lines, we line that up with the dates from where these cross the threshold. So as you can see here, we cross the threshold. So that's why the blue line for Asia Pacific is here. Here, Europe crossed into dangerous territory and then here, uh, North America crossed. And what we would expect to see if that hypothesis were correct, right, is that, well, once, say, Asia Pacific is really impacted, that this then probably will go down uh, and keep going down, right? And other that are not as impacted uh, will do that. So 
it, it is not strong and is and it didn't really work out. So I wouldn't say that this analysis like conclusively shows that this is the case. Um, so for example, here, even as Europe really ramped up the cases, those companies still um, went up. Those that had significant amounts of their revenue being created from Europe, and the same for um, Asia. Although that could be an argument that one could make is well they are really good at dampening the growth. So that makes sense that they over time actually outperform other stocks. So there could be something there. Um, and then also, what also makes sense is that North America, as it becomes clear that it's gonna affect North America as well, that these companies then are doing less on average. So, I wouldn't say that this is like um, a really strong plot there where I would say, okay, well, this really worked. But nonetheless, it is mostly a case study on how to do this type of analysis. And when we have more time available here, maybe the fact will become clearer or maybe it will fall through. Um, but either way, just having this and looking at it is interesting enough. And then people can draw their own conclusions. Other people can take this and extend it find other ideas and uh, yeah so we are really excited to see what the community will come up with for ideas on the different things that this could impact one other idea for example is well you could just take the sectors and look at specific implications there so for example healthcare well maybe you would expect that that actually is now more important than ever and that those companies are doing better than others on average um, and maybe technology, just because also it has the ability to adapt to this more quickly. It's less dependent on supply chains and it um, has the ability to still operate, right? Even with lockdowns, because people can just work remotely. That could be a hypothesis that um, we could investigate. And I think that would be really interesting. So um, yeah, just following up, the way that the challenge works is that we are gonna, every two weeks, we will select the 10 best analyses that people have created and then let the community vote on them so that the, the, the ones that the community deems most interesting will be selected and will win a $100 cash prize. So the top two of them will. And then those winners will also have the opportunity to describe the infographics in a webinar very similar to the one that I did here and really explain their results and their conclusions based on that. So I really hope to see a submission on the list. Thank you so much for watching.